Hi, today we're going to talk about simplifying square roots or also known as simplifying radicals. So first off, what, what is exactly a square root? A square root of any number is the number that when multiplied by itself gives the original number. Uh, what? That's kind of confusing. This is one thing that's best learned by example. So when we think about the square root of 9, that's what this little sign here means, square root of 9, that equals 3, since 3 times 3 equals 9, or 3 squared is 9. The square root of 16 is 4, since 4 times 4 is 16, or 4 squared is 16. So, do you notice that taking the square root of a number is the opposite of squaring a number? Instead of 2 times 2 is 4, we say the square root of 4 is 2. So it's kind of like uh, multiplication is the opposite of division, addition is the, op the opposite of subtraction, square rooting is the opposite of squaring. Okay, numbers like 9 and 16 are called perfect square since their square roots are whole numbers. Another example would be 4 since it's uh, 2 squared and uh, 25, that's 5 squared, etc., etc. Um, but what do we do when we talk about unperfect squares or imperfect squares? That would be like the square, or like 35 would be an imperfect or unperfect square um, because the square root of 35 isn't a simple, simple whole number. But how do we handle those? Now I've got this video here, and this guy is, uh, he's kind of your typical math guy, kind of nerdy, but uh, that's all right. He's, he can show us how to do this in 60 seconds or less, so. Hey guys, welcome to Math in 60 Seconds. Today we're gonna to be talking about simplifying square roots in 60 seconds. All right, simplifying square roots. When you get a simple square root, like the square root of nine, you probably know that's going to be 3. Nothing special there. What we want to do is the ones that don't give you a pretty number when you do it. Like I put one up here, the square root of 72. All right, here's how we deal with these. They're really not bad. What you do is you figure out any two numbers that multiply to 72. You probably heard them called factor trees. So I'm going to say uh, 9 and 8. It just pops into my head there. So 9 times 8. All right, if you can break the number down, you want to keep going. 9 is 3 times 3. Notice 3 and 3, both of those are prime numbers, so I'm going to circle them because we can't break them down. 8, we can make that 4 times 2. Again, 2 is prime, 4 is it. Circle it, we'll keep going. That's 2 times 2. All right, we're pretty much done. We have to look for pairs of numbers. Here's a pair of 2s, so I'm going to take a 2 out. There's a pair of 3s, I'm going to take a 3 out. This 2 doesn't have a buddy, so he's got to stay inside. 2 times 3 is 6, root 2. And that's it, guys. All right, well, thanks for joining us for Math in 60 Seconds, and we'll see you guys again soon. Okay, so let's recap what he says. So when you get a number that isn't a perfect square, in other words, not like 36 or 49 or 25, you factor it into prime numbers, which we've been doing. Um, anytime you have two matching prime numbers, you group them together and you take them out of the radical sign. Now remember, saying the radical sign is just a, is just a fancy way of saying uh, the root, the square root, or actually the cubed root is also called a radical, but we're, we're not talking about that. We're talking about square roots, and we're going to call those radicals. Um, now, numbers that don't have any pairs, they're going to stay under the radical sign, okay? So, one thing I would change about the way he taught you is I would tell you, don't just think of any two numbers. Start with the smallest prime number first, and I'll show you why. Okay, if I look here at square root of 80, which is the example, well, that's just an example I came up with. I might say to myself, okay, any two numbers. All right, 40 times 2. 2 is prime, like he said, and 40 is not, so I'm going to... Uh, Factor that 40 into, oh, 5 times 8. Now, 5 is prime, so I can't do anything there, but I can simplify this 8. 8 is 4 times 2. Here, 2 is prime. And then 4 is 2 times 2. So, I have here 5 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That would be the way he would do it. Now, the way I would recommend is I recommend... Instead of just thinking of anything, try to factor out the, the prime numbers in order from the smallest 
to the largest. And really, if you can remember these first five, you're going to be fine in this class. Um, but let's say, okay, can I factor out a 2 out of 80? Yes, I can. It's 2 times 40. Now, what I would recommend, if you don't know that, then use a calculator. Just say, does 80 divide by 2? 80 divided by 2. Yes, it's 40. So 2 times 40. And then I will go on and I will say, does 40 divide by 2? Yes, it's an even number. So what is 40 divided by 2? Divided by 2 equals 20. So I have 2 times 20. And I would say, does 20 divide by 2? Well, hopefully you know it does. So 20 divided by 2 equals 10. So I get 2 times 10. And then 10 divided by 2, 10 divided by 2, we all know is 5, 2 times 5, prime. All these numbers are prime. Now the thing I like about doing it this way is you've got all your primes in a nice little line here. They go down and then this is prime also. And now when we want to come up with our pairs, it's real easy because our 2's are next to each other. And then if we had another 5, it would be next to that 5. So the primes become right next to each other. So that tells me, okay, I've got a pair of 2's and another pair of 2's. And then 5 didn't have a buddy, so he's got to stay here in the radical sign. And I like to joke and say that if you have a buddy, you get out of jail. If you don't, you got to stay in. So these 2's became this because 2 squared was 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. These two squared are 4, 4 squared, uh, I'm sorry, the square root of 4 is 2, so we end up with 2 times 2, 4 on the outside, 5 on the inside. So our answer is 4 radical 5. Okay, let's go back to the Prezi, see where we're at. Okay, and... All right, so let's look at an example here. Square root of 84. Again, I'm factoring out my 2's. 2 times 42. 42 is 2 times 21. 21 is 7 times 3. Because I have a pair of 2's here, they can come out of the radical sign. And that gives me 2 times 7 and 3. No buddies. They've got to stay in jail. So we get 2 times, and then the square root, under the square root sign, we have 7 times 3, which is 21. So that's it. That's my answer. That's right. That is your answer. In fact, you've simplified it as much as you can, and if you put it in your calculator, you're going to get a rounded answer. So this is an exact answer. So what if we tried a really big number, like say 2,625, which I realize isn't really that big of a number, but still. Again, we can take and we start, does a 2 go into that? No, because it's not an even number. But 3 does go into it. If you use a calculator, you would find that out. And that would be 3 times 875. 875 is divisible by 5. 5 times 175. Not divisible by 2. Not divisible by 3. It is divisible by 5. 5 times 35. And 35 is not divisible by 2. Not divisible by 3. But it is divisible by 5. 5 times 7. So I end up having a pair of fives here that can come out of the radical sign and everything else has to stay in. So these two fives come out and three, five, and seven stay in. Multiply those back together and you get 107. So five times the square root of 107. Okay, I'm gonna let you try some on your own. So give this a try, pause the video, and then start back when you get an answer. Did you get two radical six? Let's try the square root of 540. Again, start by dividing by 2. Did you get 6 times the square root of 15? What about this one? Again, even number. Start by dividing by 2. Pause the video. Okay, did you get 14 times the square root of 15? And then we have this oddball, 3 times the square root of 90. It's already got something out of the radical sign. So let's do this one together. 3 times the square root of 90. Let me erase what I've got here. Okay, 3 times the square root of 90. 3 times the square root 
of 90. So we're just going to factor the 90 and kind of forget that that 3 is there for right now. So is 90 divisible by 2? Yes, it is. 2 times 45. Is 45 divisible by 2? Nope, it's not an even number. Is it divisible by 3? Yep, 3 times 15 is 45. Is 15 divisible by 2? Nope, but it is divisible by 3. 3 times 5. So I end up, my 2 doesn't have a buddy, so it's got to stay. These 3's go together, 5, no buddy. So let's go ahead. I had a 3 before. I haven't done anything, so this 3 stays outside of the radical. But now it's joined by this 3 outside. And then the 2 and the 5, no buddies. They've got to stay in the radical sign. So I've got outside, 3 times 3 is 9. 2 times 5 is 10, so my answer is 9 times the square root of 10. And that's exactly what I got. Okay, so solving large numbers is just as simple as sol solving small numbers because you are allowed to use a calculator and start by dividing by 2. If 2 doesn't work, go to 3. If 3 doesn't work, go to 5. If 5 doesn't work, go to 7. And just keep going on until you get up to that number, if it takes to that number. So you may have another method that you've learned in the past. Some people have done uh, where you can think of the greatest perfect square that you can factor out. If you want to use that method, that's fine. Use whatever method you're comfortable with. Just remember to show your work. And as always, thank you for staying awake. Have a great day.